Hi, and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto, where I like to help people understand crypto. I hope you all had a good New Year break and you're back and ready for 2021. In this video, I'll explain how different assets, or like tokens, live on different chains. It can all be a little bit confusing on what lives where and stuff like that. We have BEP assets and ERC20 assets. And I see a lot of the confusion in the um, in different community chats, as well as new people have these, these questions as well. And just quickly, if you're not sure what a blockchain is, uh, just have a good Google, but in simple terms, a distributed database. That's where tokens or coins or assets live. And crypto tokens are also known as crypto assets because they even have value. Um, and the special kinds of crypto tokens that reside on their own blockchains and represent an asset or utility. And certain chains or certain blockchains have technical standards which tokens need to adhere to in order to run on there and live on there. Some don't. Um, they just are and we're just going to go through that process to understand if you're new here Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. So I know to do more videos like this Here's some sort of the major blockchains out there um, That I'll be used for this discussion. There are more um, But these are the kind of the, some of the bigger ones I've used a chain here to depict the, the blockchain itself and put some of the assets on each chain um, Where everything sort of belongs at the time of the, the recording uh, so first we have the Bitcoin blockchain over here, and that is where obviously you know Bitcoin lives, and it's the only uh, asset on on the Bitcoin blockchain. So it's one chain that has kind of one token or one coin on it, um, and nothing else. It's the biggest by market cap. It was the first around. Um, while there's a lot happening within the Bitcoin space on the blockchain, it's just Bitcoin uh, that that lives there. It's quite specialized in that way. Second, we have Ethereum, and Ethereum has lots of coins. We'll go that in, in detail. So first we have Ether, and Ether is the native token to the Ethereum blockchain, which is this, uh, which is this one here. So it's a little confusing because um, Ether is the native cryptocurrency on the Ethereum platform, but most people, just about everybody, call it Ethereum, like an interchangeable. As you can see, even here on um, CoinMarketCap, it's called Ethereum when really it's actually uh, Ether. That's the native token, and it kind of like powers the chain. It's sort of like the gas or the petrol in your car. Um, it's required to get stuff done, move transactions around, interact with contracts and stuff like that. Uh, there are some other ones here. There's we've got Tether, we've got Chainlink, Dai, Wrapped Bitcoin, Uni, just to name a few. There's there's quite a lot. Ethereum is the second biggest blockchain by market cap, and it is definitely the most active blockchain. There's so much going on there. So Ethereum has a token standard called the ERC20. So let's go have a look at that. And this is like a technical extent standard that a coin needs to adhere to. This be this was. Um, obviously created in 2015 and became very popular during the uh, 2017 ICO um, period as a lot of projects were using this particular standard in order to um, launch tokens. And it has here like certain uh, functions that this particular token needs to have um, in order for it to satisfy the actual standard. So tokens that adhere to this, um, I'm, you know, uh, called like ERC20 tokens and stuff like that, and then would run on the Ethereum blockchain. And ERC stands for um, Ethereum Request for Comments, and I think that's the Ethereum Improvement Proposal. Just because you have like BEPs and you have IPs as well. There's many um, ERC sort of like standards uh, that, that for Ethereum, different ones. So you have like the non-fungible tokens as well, ERC721. Um, many other ones here, so the specific one here is the token standard, so Ether and um, USDT, Chainlink, stuff like that, all adhere to the ERC20 standard. There are many tokens on Ethereum, having a look, there's approximately 352,000 uh, token contracts found um, on the Ethereum blockchain, that is, that is, that is quite a lot. Um, looking over at uh, coin market cap like a lot of the ones you'll see here in say the you know the top 50 um, I don't know how many are in the top 50 but quite a large amount will be ERC20 tokens I uh, got Yearn, you've got Sushi here um, the guy up there there's, there's, there's so many um, that all adhere to this ERC20 token and they all run on the Ethereum blockchain Ethereum also started um, DeFi and DeFi started in Ethereum. 
So if we go over here to the DeFi Pulse, the DeFi Pulse shows you some of the uh, projects that's happening within DeFi, which is known for decentralized finance as opposed to centralized for a third party. Um, this tracks the value locked up, looks at different, um, different projects and the size and stuff like that. Um, and it's all specific to the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, and here's a bit of an article that explains what's DeFi Pulse, which I'll be linking in the description. Uh, there's, there's so much going on in Ethereum. This kind of, well, everything here is happening in Ethereum and this website kind of helps you understand what's everything, what's Maker, what's Uniswap, um, stuff like that. So summing up on Ethereum, there's, there's so much. There's the DeFi projects, there's just normal um, projects. There'll be private corporations, perhaps doing stuff on them as well, unis, the, um, students learning, you name it. There's everything going on in Ethereum. It's not funny. Looking at Binance, um, we have the Binance chain and this has different tokens on it as well. Um, this first here, we have the BNB or Binance coin, and that is the native token to the Binance chain. Very much like um, Ether over here is native token to Ethereum. So if we go have a look at that one, um, over to Binance, this is the Binance coin um, specifically, and it implements its own standard. It's known as a BET2 asset, BET2 token. And BET2 um, is a technical standard, very much like ERC20 is for Ethereum. BET2 is kind of like the equivalent, but for Binance chain. So if everything is an ERC20 or is a BET2 token, um, you'll know, you know, basically is it Ethereum or is it Binance? There are many other ones. There's like Rune, which is 4Chain, there's Trust Wallet, there's actually um, Tether or USDT, that's also on both chains. It can get a little confusing. Um, there's the BUSD, or kind of like another stable coin equivalent. And they also have BTCB, which is the kind of like the equivalent of wrap Bitcoin on the Binance chain. Binance doesn't really compare to Ethereum with, re with regard to the amount of activity. However, it is quite a popular chain and it's getting uh, more and more popular and more and more activity happens um, as time goes on. But by, you know, most of the action is still happening on Ethereum, um, comparatively. Then there's the ThorChain, uh, which just runs ThorChain. There are no tokens on there at the moment. The plan is later on, Room will move over to ThorChain um, for that satellite date. And for the purpose of this video, it doesn't really matter where it lives. Unlike Ethereum and Binance Chain, ThorChain is designed to, for, for like one thing, and it just does one thing only. It's just to execute its own chain. Whereas like Ethereum and Binance can do many things. There's many different projects that run on top of it. These are more like generic chains, whereas ThorChain does kind of like one thing, which is similar to Bitcoin. Bitcoin just does you know, one token that does one thing um, and that's all it does. There are many other chains out there like Polkadot, Zilliqa, Cordano, Binance Smart Chain, just to name a few. Um, this is just a very basic overview to give the understanding. So to sum up so far, you have a chain, then a technical token standard, and then you can have a token or an asset that implements that standard. Uh, as an example, you would have Binance Chain, Bet2 Asset, then the BNB coin, or Binance coin, um, or Binance Chain, which is a Bet2 Asset, and Rune, or Trust Wallet token. Or you can have Ethereum coin, ERC20 token, Ether, or Ethereum chain, sorry, Ethereum chain, ERC, token uh, Ether or Ethereum chain ERC20 token and it's a chain link asset. I mean, to be honest, Bitcoin doesn't have a standard, it just is. There is Bitcoin core implementation, but that's kind of like there's no equivalent standard. This asks a really good question. Can you move assets from one chain to another? Can I move my Bitcoin to, you know, Ethereum? Can I move so sort of like Ether over to Binance? Is that possible? And it's kind of like a yes and a no. Currently, there's no way for a token, say Bitcoin, to natively move from one chain to another. It's just not possible. It's like putting a square peg in a round hole. If you think of different shapes like different blockchains, um, they just will not fit onto each other. And more specifically, like I said, um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin can't be moved to the Ethereum chain as Bitcoin does not implement an ERC20 standard. Ethereum can't natively move to Binance chain because Ethereum does not implement the BET2 standard. They just technically will not move across. With all that said, workarounds do exist. 
Whilst it's not possible to move Bitcoin natively to Ethereum, it's possible to move the value of the Bitcoin. So if I've got say two Bitcoin or whatever, I can move the value of that Bitcoin to Ethereum or Binance. So I can put that into liquidity pool and put my Bitcoin to work. Or if for whatever reason, I wanted to swap my Bitcoin for Ethereum and not go through an exchange, I could do that by putting a representation of Bitcoin on Ethereum and then swapping it through Uniswap or something. So that gets done through a third party. So in this example, I would send my Bitcoin to this third party and then they would give me a representation of Bitcoin, like for example, wrapped Bitcoin, which is this one here. But this is not real Bitcoin. This is a token Bitcoin that, or tokenized version of Bitcoin that implements the ERC-20 standard. So it's able to operate on uh, Ethereum. And it kind of really just holds the value of Bitcoin. From, uh, from a user point of view, it is in essentially an IOU for your Bitcoin. You don't hold it, you don't self custody it. It's not the same as if you're holding on your cold wallet at home or on your ledger or, or whatever you have. Uh, it's a bit of an IOU and then the trust is involved that this third party is going to honor it if you want it to go back the other way, um, when you want it to go back the other way. Uh, on Binance, it's the same thing, except instead of having wrapped Bitcoin, you have um, BTCB, which is a representative of uh, BEP2 representative of uh, Bitcoin on the Binance chain. And it's the same thing. You send your Bitcoin over to uh, this third party and then they give you a representative of Bitcoin here, a BTCB, that is a BEP2 asset. So it's enabled to run on the Binance chain. And that kind of gives you the value of Bitcoin on the Binance chain, but it's not the same as Bitcoin itself. So with going through third parties, you're essentially surrendering your Bitcoin to that third party in order to get a representation of it on the chain. And that introduces uh, custodial risk or third party risk because you're literally surrendering ownership of that Bitcoin in order for that party to tokenize it um, on a different chain. Uh, that one's an ERC20 token of Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain. And this one is an, uh, a BET2 token or that runs on the Binance chain, both giving you the value of Bitcoin, but not actually being Bitcoin itself. These are, within Ethereum at least, these are the ways that you can put Bitcoin to work, sort of like the bridges, they would call it, in the way you can send real Bitcoin and it will wrap it and will create some tokenized representative of that Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain. This process allows me to take my Bitcoin and then which is now wrapped Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain and then use this uh, to, to provide liquidity within liquidity pools, say on Uniswap here, if I had you know, corresponding Ethereum, um, or to put it into BetSwap, which is on the Binance chain. So this is where I can use my, my Bitcoin that I otherwise wouldn't be able to use by, by wrapping or going through that third party. Whilst it's good to put my Bitcoin at work, my value that I've got stored and kind of locked up on the on the um, Bitcoin blockchain, put it into Ethereum and Binance and stake it there through BEPSwap or Uniswap, it does entail risk. You are relying on this third party, you're relying on this process to move your um, uh, Bitcoin back if you want to do it. Because again, it's not yours, you're not custodial on it. So there is risk involved. And I've got an article here, I think this guy's more promoting his own, but it kind of raises the points on, on why it is a bit of an issue, why there is risk on it, because it's not kind of real Bitcoin as a way, and things can go wrong. You, you kind of, there's introducing more risk, as if more risk compared to Bitcoin being on your own you know, cold wallet, um, self-custody. So you really got to weigh out the risk, whether or not it's worth it uh, for yourself. To sum up, there are different blockchains out there and tokens or coins kind of belong to specific chains. Bitcoin lives on Bitcoin um, blockchain or Bitcoin chain. ERC20 tokens like Chainlink live on um, Ethereum. And BEP2 tokens like uh, BNB or Rune live on the Binance chain. They can't natively be swapped. You can't move tokens natively from one chain to another, it just can't be done. It needs to go through a third party and needs to get wrapped or transferred or some type of bridge made um, in order for that to happen. But that does introduce additional risk. I hope that helps. If you like this video, uh, like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. 
and I will be happy to answer them. Thanks and goodbye.